Hi, I'm Pastor Lucas Miles, host of the Lucas Miles Show and the Church Boys, and an influencer here on Faith Social. Uh, it's a real privilege to be able to come to you today and walk through the start of this Advent season as we talk about finding your Christmas peace. And as I kick things off here this first week, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about hope. And hope, you know, especially in a year like 2020, I think is something that we all need and we're all looking for. And the good news is, is that we have an abundance of hope in Christ. And so I want to share with you a little bit that, about that today. You know, when we talk about Advent, really one of the things that we're speaking about that's kind of central to this whole concept is the idea of the incarnation of Christ. And all that means is the fact that, that God became flesh. He embodied physical flesh. We call that as Christians the incarnation. And so as we begin to think about that, it's really easy to just sort of gloss over the idea that this, this God in heaven one day just decided to become a man and, and he, you know, uh, um, through the Holy Spirit, uh, was, was conceived within the Virgin Mary and that she gave birth to him and he entered the world. But I really believe that that's sort of a simplistic way of looking at how it was that God actually became man. And in order to learn something about hope, I want to just talk about that briefly. See, all throughout Scripture, since the fall of man forward, it's the moment that man fell, we see this concept that God began searching for someone to stand in the gap. But Scripture says that every time he looked, there was none to be found. So after man fell, he was looking for that in Abraham. He was looking for that in, in, in Moses. He was looking that, for that throughout the patriarchs and in, in King David and the prophets. But there was no one who could be found who actually embodied the, righteousness, the righteous requirements of the law who fully in and of themselves fulfilled those requirements in order to be uh, one who could truly stand in the gap. See, when man sinned, it required a like sacrifice. And the only way to get a like sacrifice is if God came down in perfection through the person Jesus Christ and gave his life for our behalf. It's what we call at our church the great exchange, that Jesus gave me his righteousness in exchange for my wickedness, for my depravity. It's the best deal you can ever do as a believer and as a person to make that decision to really do the exchange of exchanging your depravity with God's holiness, with God's perfection, with God's righteousness. But how was it that Jesus actually came to be God in the flesh? See, immediately after man fell, God began a journey in order to bring about this child of peace, Jesus Christ, and he did that through the prophets. You know, if you just opened up some of the prophets like Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel, you'll see these guys a lot of times where God will tell them, go and proclaim to the trees and go out to the mountains and say this and go to the hill country and say this. And literally, he was just calling these prophets to go out and to begin to speak his words throughout all of the land. And I don't believe he was just having them do this randomly or having them do this as a test. I believe what was happening when you really read these stories is that God was literally preparing the way for the incarnation of Jesus by these prophets speaking God-ordained words out into the atmosphere that would eventually culminate with such power that it could bring about the conception of a spiritual being in the form of human flesh. And see, we all have in our life a desire to see hope come to pass in our lives, especially in a year like this. You know, if you're like many people out there across the world that I've talked to, uh, you might be going through financial issues. You might be scared about the political uh, unrest that's happening right now in our culture. You might be worried about uh, your health uh, due to things like the pandemic that are happening. And I just want you to know that we can have hope, that we can rise above these situations because our reality is not just found in this temporal realm, but it's found in eternity in Jesus Christ. See, Jesus literally became an incarnate form of hope for the entire world. Through those words of the prophet, through God's uh, uh, um, providence, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through Mary's receptivity to God's plan, all of this came about in what Scripture calls the fullness of time, that at just the right moment, hope was born out into this world. And see, on that night, when this Virgin Mary gave birth 
to literally Christ, the Savior of the world, hope entered into this atmosphere. It had been lost in the garden. There was a time where there was hope in the garden, but it was was lost through our sin and through our shame the moment that mankind ate from the fruit of that tree. See, but through Christ, He brought hope back into this atmosphere when He became a man. And as we know, He lived a sinless life, and He then eventually gave His life for you and I on a cross in order to fulfill that great exchange. Our sin for His righteousness. His righteousness for our sin. And now the Bible tells us that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You know, there's a verse that, uh, that comes to mind when I think of hope, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 6. And it says this, In verse uh, 19, it says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. And he became a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. 